The fitness movement is brought to you by Zor Fitness. We offer coaching and individualized program design, as well as educational content for coaches and athletes. It's all at one place, zorfitness.com. So today we're going to be talking about our athlete camp that's coming up here in January of 2023. It's going to be on the 21st and 22nd at Lumber Capital Athletics, which is the, the gym that I co-own here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. So we're going to get people from obviously our community involved as much as we can, but obviously Zor Fitness, that's like really who we're gearing this towards. So it's a lot of our individual design clients and people who just care a lot about their performance in CrossFit. This is geared to competitive athletes for people who, um, you know, are taking their performance seriously and have a little bit more experience than just like the average class guard, right? It's really geared towards people who are, are specifically looking to compete in the sport of fitness. So uh, I will link to it in the show notes if people are curious, but zorfitness.com slash camp so you can get more information on the actual camp there and uh, obviously a sign up link as well. If you are one of our clients or a member of Lumber Capital Athletics, you get a discount code. So check out the bottom there to, to be able to apply that and make sure you reserve your spot because we're only taking 20 people. We're going to make sure that we're we're keeping a good ratio of coach to athlete going on. So welcome, Chris. Um, we're going to kind of walk down through a breakdown of our sessions. we got four sessions, an AM and a PM on day one, Saturday, and then same thing for Sunday. We'll have some lunch and learns in there as well, as well as just some time to hang out with everybody. But we actually want to walk through the sessions of what we're going to be going over, uh, the teaching, the sort of uh, points of performance, and just kind of like overall, like what we're thinking of of the plan for the weekend. So your, your session one lead. So Chris, jump into it. What's session one look like? Yeah, so session one, we're going to be working on um, some lifting. So uh, if you were at last camp, we worked on uh, the snatch in the first session. So naturally, in our first session this camp, we're going to be working on the clean and jerk. Um, we're going to be working on both the clean and the jerk as it's often um, put together, not only obviously in an Olympic lifting meet, but in a CrossFit competition as well. And so we're going to be working on both Olympic lifts. And then uh, transitioning from that into uh, more barbell cycling. So last camp, we, um, again, worked exclusively on snatch. So we snatched heavy, and then we worked on various uh, techniques of cycling a snatch, how to do them, when to do them, what loads to look at. Um, this time, we're going to be looking at cycling a shoulder to overhead um, and how to effectively cycle a barbell from your shoulders to over your head, when to use what techniques, um, uh, and, and how to um, preserve, you know, certain muscle groups or areas of your body while doing that. And then we're going to be combining that with, um, you know, maybe some ins and outs of the shuttle run, which uh, was introduced to the open season last year. And so broad perspective, obviously, you touched on wanting uh, to help competitive athletes. And a lot of what we're going over are movements that you're, you're, you're most likely going to see in the open season. So open and quarterfinals, but also some common movements you'll see in some, uh, higher level, uh, competitions. Um, and so being able to, you know, it sounds silly, you know, uh, oh, the technique behind a shuttle run. Right. But, um, it, it the more also, you do them, the more you realize you can be efficient or you cannot be just like anything else. <laughs> right. Right. It's like very similar to, uh, the burpee variations, right. Uh, the people at the top are paying attention how to do them efficiently. And the people who are not at the top probably aren't. And so being able to add a little tweak here or there to be more efficient to them is going to help you gain uh, yeah. uh, seconds over time. So that's kind of the ins and outs of the first session is very, very barbell focused. Um, yep. you know, got, getting heavy with the clean and jerk and then cycling a shoulder to overhead as well as some points in a uh, shuttle run. Let's, let's tease the workout because it's the itinerary <laughs> is released. We'll also link to that in the show notes so people can actually see the, the minute by minute breakdown, maybe not minute by minute, but pretty detailed breakdown of camp, you know, your local stuff that you could do. Uh, you know, I put in there some of my favorite coffee shops and eating joints yeah. and stuff. So, uh, yeah, check it out. So the, the conditioning aspect of this, this is sort of the application phase, the last, uh, kind of step in the process after we've gone over some of the technique, um, and obviously got to basically max out your clean jerk. Mm -hmm. Now it's two, 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 three intervals. So those are minutes. So two minutes of work, one minute of rest, two minutes of work, one minute of rest, two minutes of work, one minute of rest, and three minutes of work. That's how that uh, is structured. 
It's a 12 shuttle run buy-in with the remaining, the remaining time you have max shoulders to, shoulder to overhead at 135.95. Uh, every time you pick up that bar, though, you have to do a squat clean into that first rep, and you have to advance the bar um, every 10, 10 reps. So it's four time to get to 50 reps, or if you get capped, you're done at that point. <laughs> I think this one's going to be super fun. I actually did it the other day in my training, and I won't tell people where I got to, but it was it was spicy. That buy-in, you, you got to go hard. Yeah, that's kind of the purpose there, right, is uh... – We've seen some interval format workouts make their way into the open, into the quarterfinals, and into the games, right? And so being able to uh, appropriately approach one of those interval-style Metcons is going to be super important. But then, like we talked about, being able to execute on the skills we go over with, how to effectively uh, cycle a shoulder to overhead movement, as well as uh, the shuttle run will be super, super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, so that one's that's that's quite the combo between maxing out and then going into that. I think it's going to be super fun and good kickoff to camp. Our next session, um, I'm going to be going over legless rope climbs and GHDs. Again, these are two movements that we've seen where the legless rope climbs was primarily in the the age group qualifiers from last year. But I think oftentimes they kind of use that stuff to kind of try a little bit, a little bit more for the individual divisions. So I would not be shocked at all if we saw like let's rope climb in quarterfinals. Um, certainly when you get to a semifinals level, that's going to be frequently tested. Um, so like let's rope climbs and GHDs, which we obviously, obviously saw the last two years in quarterfinals, which is going to probably be a staple because now that they're requiring it, more and more people are getting them, which just means that you're going to see them programmed more and more. So those two movements we're going to have, you know, I'm going to be basically going over some of the, the points of performance of things that you can think about when you're unfatigued versus fatigued, um, like how that changes keeping mechanics for things like a legless rope climb, um, you know, simple things like how you're actually descending on the rope. We went over just like a regular rope climb last camp and it was like, you know, something that you could tell a lot of people didn't put enough time into, especially the descent. And I think that's, a you know, also true for legless rope climb. So we'll be make sure to go over, you know, basically the, the kip. Um, and then the descent to make sure you're doing that efficiently and you can get through as many reps as you can. Then for the GHD, uh, some of the big things are like the GHD setup, because I see people get that wrong a lot, or maybe just not as efficient as they could be mm -hmm. if they change their setup. Simple things like where you're looking, how you're breathing, if you're taking a single breath versus two breaths and where you're doing that throughout the movement. Um, you know, if you're bending your arms a lot and like externally rotating to reach back versus kind of keeping your arms straighter, almost like an ab mat sit up, um, simple things like that. Even like what you do with your knees, like are you trying to actively extend them versus kind of let them be bent a little bit more simple things like that make a big difference uh, when you're going over, you know, 150 reps or, you know, 180, like we saw in the other year for quarterfinals is a ton of reps. So it's just an important thing to do. And then we're going to go into an EMOM after that. That's basically is a, a big rotating EMOM that allows people to get some practice on like the rope climbs, GHDs, but then some other movements thrown in that are sort of midline centric that don't like put a lot of fatigue into the system for the pooling, but, you know, make it a little bit more applicable to what you're actually going to see. Yeah. And I think, like you mentioned, I think the GHD setup has been in the last two years. Um, will we see it again? Maybe, maybe not, but um, the fact that they continue to include it um, and that it's essentially almost always included at the semifinal level, the games level, you're going to see it at those. Yeah, just the uh, fact that it's on a quarterfinals list, like the equipment yes. list, will mean that a lot of other competitions that are off-season are going to follow suit and put that on their, their uh, equipment list. So even if you're not, if you, you know, say you don't care about quarterfinals or you're a master's athlete or something and that's, you know, going to go beyond that. It's like, it's still important to, to have that just for that sake. Right. Exactly. Cool, man. You're up session three. So session three, we're going to be doing more gymnastic stuff. So the focus of that session is going to be bar muscle ups and parallel handstand pushups. So, um, we're going to take the time to kind of break down each, um, you know, as far as the bar muscle up is concerned, um, again, another movement that's been a staple at the open level, the quarterfinals level, the age group semifinals level. I believe the age group last year even had a section that was like 
what was it like max bar muscle ups left in like yeah it was uh handstand walk ghd or flip flop those ghd handstand walk ghd handstand walk and then bar muscle ups in the remaining time yeah and so you know have, <laughs> being able to do those under fatigue um kind of the major cues or focus points is, is huge right because when you're tired um you don't want to be focusing on the fact that you're breathing having and tired you want to focus on the fact that like all right drive my hips press down do the bar you know stuff like that to make sure you're focused on the task at hand versus how fatigued you are um and then the parallel handstand push-ups i don't know if that's something we'll see at this level it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility being that it's super easy to uh build parallels out of like pvc pipe and uh you just set it up as a deficit so maybe maybe not but I, you know i've done a i did a local comp i want to say last year maybe the year before that that had parallel handstand push-ups in it and so it's something that at a local comp level or, or um like a qualifier comp level you could definitely definitely see those involved yeah and even like a bigger deficit handstand push-up where you're just putting your hand flat on some plates that if you know how to parallel handstand push up and you're comfortable doing that, that's going to become way easier. Right? Right. It's just Especially. like going from deficit handstand push ups to, you know, flat handstand push ups. It's like, oh, this is way easier now. <laughs> right. And so you're going to get a lot of skill transfer there. So yeah. we're going to be going over the fine points of that, especially because the kip and the parallel, if you've never done parallel handstand push ups before, the kip is uh, a little bit different than your standard handstand push up. And so if you're utilizing the same kip, like I did the first time I ever did it, you like you're going to get half a press and kind of like fall back down under your head. Yeah. Um, I actually had you coaching me up on this the other couple months ago at this point now, but it was like, I really hadn't done many of them at all. Um, and I was like, I, I went to do it and I was doing some super deep, de uh, like parallel handstand push up sounds like, man, this kip just like, it's like, I'm just like stopping with my elbows at like yeah. four inches and I'm just pressing out every time. I was like, Chris yep. help. Yeah. So, yeah. No, so you, getting, the stuff that you told me was super helpful and I it cleaned it up really quickly. So I'm excited for you to work with some people on it. Heck yeah, man. And then uh, the workout we're going to do from the application standpoint is kind of um, in the realm of that um, age group workout we talked about. So it's going to be every three minutes by four sets, but it's kind of like a two minute on one minute off format. So it's going to be 50 double unders, 25 wall balls, and then max bar muscle ups in the remainder of that two minute window. Um, and again, the focus on that uh, of that is to when you get to the bar is to really have the the athletes push the sets that they're holding there. Um, you know, so they can really work on the skills we go over in the first part, right? Really push to make sure to look at, okay, as I'm tired, uh, can I hang on to this bar and then executing on the cues we've given them in that set? Um, so that's kind of what we're going to look for. I think that'll be a fun little workout. I think for folks who are, su who are super fit, they're going to get a ton of bar muscle practice. And for the people who are maybe not quite there yet, that's okay because um, you're still going to get a chance to at least get a couple and continue to work on those skills. Yeah. And if you're someone who like the, the deep parallels are going to just be like really tough or if bar muscle ups aren't a skill that you have yet, obviously we're going to work with you and figure out what's going to be a, a good option that you can still start developing the skill to get there without just being like, Oh, like we'll scale you back. But at the same time, allowing you to actually get some quality work in. Yeah. And that's where with the parallel handstand push up specifically, we'll probably do some sort of EMOM work or, you know, pure skill work because that's a movement that um, I feel like, and I could be wrong on this, but I feel like that's a movement unless you've done some sort of some high level competition already, it's not really in your repertoire of things like you're working on necessarily. Yeah um probably doesn't need to be either necessarily exactly right and so, so it's okay to scale it back yeah right but you know part of the part of the nice part about camps is you get to touch on skills that maybe you don't in your normal training to work on them right and so we'll we'll do some skill work to to, to work on the cues we go over for that yeah yeah that those uh intervals are going to get spicy quick yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> all right then session four is going to be the name game we're not going to tell you what it is um, I will post a teaser the week before we will tell you that the name of it is alter ego and that it has two parts. Mm -hmm. Part one is Bruce Banner. Part two is the Hawk. So take your guesses, take your guesses, <laughs> let us know what you think. But, uh, no, basically what we're going to do is we'll release the workout 
basically have people go over it. We're not going to give you a ton of strategy at the beginning, basically allowing you to sort of formulate a, a pacing and, you know, break strategy um, that makes sense for you. And then we'll obviously take you through a warm up that we've already kind of written out beforehand so that you're not just blindly going into that. But then after the actual workout, we're going to take some time for reflection and breakdown and basically like debriefing and saying like, Hey, what things worked well, what could you maybe have shifted or then differently for next time? Because in this sport, there is still an element of like, sometimes if you're at a competition, they're like, Hey, um, you know, we're not releasing this workout until the end. Like these are the four workouts. We'll have a fifth workout. That's a final. We're not releasing that until 30 minutes beforehand. You got to figure it out with your, uh, the strategy that makes sense. Or, you know, at the games, this happens all the time. Uh, or it used to happen even more where like Castro would walk out on the floor and be like, all right, and this is the event. And he would like tell them verbally what it is. And they'd have to go do it like 20 seconds later or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like ridiculous. So there still is an element of being able to pace a little bit by feel and kind of go on the fly. It's not quite to that, that degree here, but I think it, it is still an important skill to have. Yeah. And I think it's also an important skill because not just from that perspective of, getting a workout you don't know and having to go off of how you feel. But also I think we've all been in a workout where you strategize it one way you get going and you hit the like, Oh no, this is, <laughs> this is, this is not feel the way I expected it. Right. And so people who get into that point who can still salvage a workout, mm. right. are the ones who have um, various degrees and speeds to go to. They have a, a toolbox to be able to say like, okay, this is kind of the pacing I can go to. This is how I could do. And they can do that mid workout and the people who don't have that end up just panicking and dying. And so, yeah. and we've all seen that where it's like, they got punched in the mouth by a workout. It's not what they expect. And then it's, it, it, it's like a, fl a fish floundering on, on the floor. Yeah, it's literally like that. there's two speeds. It's either like the speed that I normally go out for whatever movement or it's like I'm like hands on knees, resting, questioning my life right now. Right, right. <laughs> and so that that's a skill that permeates through the sport and being able to go to that. Obviously, A, if you don't know the workout, which is <clears throat> super common, right, um, from, a, from, a, from a, a, a local comp or – standpoint you don't know the final workout right and then you it gets announced and you got to figure it out or you know from a from a age group perspective or quarterfinals perspective right the workouts get announced but you might it's still not that much time like if you have yeah. if, you're, if you're a normal like person a with day a maybe yeah. yeah so if you're a normal person with a full-time job and it's like i mean this this happened to maybe one of my clients last year it's like okay well i got this day to do it yeah. And so you don't have the you don't have the opportunity to have these multiple breakdowns. I'll try this strategy this time. I'll try this strategy this time. And so being able to uh, formulate that quickly is it is a good skill to have for the sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And even if you're working with a coach, it's like that coach might be like if it's the open, they have a roster of athletes that are also under their, you know, like they're coaching them still. So it's like, there's, a, they have a lot of people that are responsible that they're responsible for. So it's like, you might not be able to just like call them up and have a long conversation about like what the workout should be. Right. Like they may be able right. to can give you like some tips, some ideas, and maybe some like general strategy or like, you know, for example, like our company will probably release something that's around, you know, this sort of thing, like a conversation around the workout, but it's still an important skill. And if you're someone who's just like following like a blog or like coaching yourself, like this is exactly what you have to do then. It's like, you have to right. formulate it on your own and figure it out because no one's going to help you out with that process unless you got someone who is acting as a coach. So yeah, definitely transferable. Cool, man. I'm excited for camp. Camp number two. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited to obviously have people at the facility and, you know, check it out. And, but also it's like my hometown now. So it's, you know, people can, I can help people out a little bit more. I mean, you were able to do this at the last one where basically it's like, Hey, like I know what's, what's around here and like to help yeah. you, like, you know, point people to the right directions and stuff. So really looking forward to it. Um, getting some, some more hands-on athletes, so to speak. For sure. For sure. Cool, man. We'll see you there. You got it. See you guys then. Thanks for listening to today. If you're someone who just found the show, I would encourage you to subscribe so you can stay up to date. If you're someone who's been listening for a while and enjoying what you're hearing, I would encourage you to leave a rating or a review for the show. It would definitely help us out. 
And lastly, if you're someone who does take your fitness seriously and cares about your performance deeply, I will encourage you to look into hiring one of our coaches. Until next time, stay the course.